Hi, welcome back. In this video, you're going to learn eight types of damping. And this is for single strung and double strung harps. And damping allows you to get more clarity when you're playing the harp and sometimes a sort of a spunky feeling. And it allows you to make fewer mistakes on the harp, makes it easier. So here we go. On both single strung and double strung harp, we want to avoid the bass becoming mushy. And sometimes when you've just played a chord, it's still ringing, and then you play a chord that's close to it, it just gets to be a big mush. And this is a way to make it much clearer, but it's also a way to make playing easier because you don't have to be terrified that you're gonna touch a string that's already buzzing when you go back down there. So I'll just give you a little example. This is in a tune that I'm writing that's not named yet, but. I didn't even have to look at it because I was doing damping. If I didn't do damping, it would sound like... buzzed a little bit. I just had to be careful. But anyway, so all I'm doing there for the double strung players is just one five eighths on a D and then a G tenth, A tenth, and B tenth. But anyway, that's an example. Now I'm going to show you how this works, damping. So first you've got the category of flat-handed damping. That's when you put your whole hand on the strings. You're covering a wide area of the harp because your hand is big and you're even putting the palm of your hand on. So right now you can actually put your hand on the harp and feel every string. With a flat-handed damp it's important to really let your whole hand touch the harp. You're not away from it a little bit like that. You're really stopping all of the strings from ringing. And you kind of keep your hand at an angle, not like this, so that it, it'll cover a lot of area. So here are some examples in that thing I just played. There were two kinds of flat-handed damp in what I just played. One was soft and one was crisp. So the soft, you let the strings ring a little bit and just touch them before you play the next one. So to do a soft damp, pluck the strings. I'm going to do a tenth and then let it ring and then come down softly on it. If you don't touch both strings when you do this, then this will happen. It'll keep ringing. So you actually have to be where the string is. Now to do a crisp damp, you're going to you're going to let those strings almost not ring. So it's like and I'll let you try that. Let's try it on an A tenth. And this is used a lot of times in jazz. I think it's called a slap bass. Usually it's octaves. But anyway, so you're going to do an A tenth here. Or you can do an octave, it doesn't matter, but anyway, you're going to Stop it right away. 
Again, totally flat hand. And lots of times when you pluck something, it's ringing, you go back, you want to make sure you touch both of those strings with your hand. Sometimes I'll make sure I touch them, and because I can feel them ringing, I know where they are, and I can just slide right up to the next strings to play. So I did a slide dance there where I touched the strings and then slid up one string, which is really useful if you're doing a succession of chords coming up the harp, which sometimes you have like a walking bass. So the great thing about this is as you stop the strings, you can feel the ones that are vibrating, and that means your hand knows where it is, you just slide up one till you feel the next string. That's why I don't need to look at the harp when I do it. So that's what you're going to do there. Now be sure when you do this that your whole hand touches the harp. Pat your harp right now and just feel all the strings. Another damping method is fingertip damping, which you'll use a lot in the tune, The Bird and the Bee. And that is because you want the tune to sound spunky. If I didn't do that, that would sound like... And it takes away the character of the tune and the clarity of it. So with this one, you just... You just actually use the same shape you just used, a 158 in this instance, and you open your hand right back to that shape. So you need to be able to make that shape easily without looking, and that you can do the, the hovercraft, which you learned, I think, in tutorial three. So, whoops, I didn't do it. Now try it yourself with a 158. I'm going to do an F158. It's easy to see because you've got blue, red, and blue. So pluck and go right back to it. Lots of times you damp in the right hand too, even just like a two string damp, like a six at the beginning of that tune, the bird and the bee. So the beginning of that tune I did. So I damped twice with my right hand. So uh, the reason you do this is to give a spunkier, cleaner sound, and you don't want to do it the whole piece. You intersperse this with other things, and that's what makes it really interesting. But also you can use it to create syncopation. So in that I was going one and two and three and. Another type of damping is two-handed damping. It stops both sides at the same time, and it gives a kind of a <gasps> feeling because the whole harp stops ringing for a second. And harps don't do that. They keep ringing. So you are creating a new kind of a sensation for the listener. Now, I damped with my left hand by itself one of those times, but I damped with the both hands both at that time. Left hand 158, right hand 6. So you're going to try that.
Another method of open-handed damping is a rocked tenth. So you play it four and one, and then you go back and damp it. A blocked tenth would be like that, but rocked. So I'm just going to improv a little bit. I'm going to do my right hand to stay on a recycled C158. Left hand will be tenths. So you can see I mixed rocked tints with blocked tints. So I'd like you to try it now on a rocked. So let's do a C tint and come down on it softly. Slide your hand up just one and then do a D. Softly slide, soft slide. Lots of times you don't need to damp up here, even if you're using octaves or you're using tenths, because the strings ring differently here. When they're down here, they can overpower each other if you don't damp. And so I'm going to do something that I, it's a double strung technique that I call filigrees, and it sounds hard, but it's not. And the right hand, you're just going like that, just like your hand is resting here and you're just doing cigarette pose on an F the whole time. And then the left hand is doing open-handed rocked tenths, but down here you'll see that I damp. So you can impress your friends with this one if you have a double strung. Did you see at the end where I damped? Sometimes you damp the left hand in order to let the right hand melody really be clear. And I'll show you an example here. So with this I'm going. When I damped that left side, it allowed you to really hear that trip, that treble. In the next video, I'll share tips for learning my tune, The Bird and the Bee, and it uses a lot of damping.